Welcome to the Highlander Rewatch Podcast. I'm one of your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This is Kyle. This is Eamon. And welcome to one of our new shows. This is one of our new shows. Like there's going to be multiple. No, this is the only one right now. Uh, our new show, Highlander Reboot. Highlander uh, Reboot. We're the rebooters. That's today. right. The rebooters, the retutors. Mm -hmm. the, the jokes are endless already. <laughs> already. But we are here to talk about, I don't know, I guess the reboot. And That's not right. The, <laughs> not the '90s cartoon reboot, but uh, the I wish we could reboot. That's right. So uh, to give you a, a little breakdown on what these episodes are going to be like, uh, now that there's been some kind of action on the reboot, I'm sure everyone's kind of, well, you've clicked on this episode, so you know what the topic is. It's uh, the casting of uh, Jim Caviezel, I believe it is. Is it Jim Caviezel? Yes, Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. Yeah, Jim Jesus Christ himself. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, yep. of, of Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill uh, as presumably Conor McLeod, but we're going to get into that. But so th there's, there's some action on the Why reboot. Why Jim Caviezel? It kind of sounds like Henry Cavill, no? No. No? <laughs> no. In my head, I'm like, what's his name? Henry Caviezel? No. Yeah, Caviezel. Nailed it. Didn't they they end with L's or something. Yeah, that's recently. true. Oh, did he? I think so. Uh-oh. I, I don't remember. Anyway, so we're going to be dropping these episodes anytime some like Highlandery stuff happens with the reboot uh so we can talk about it and we'll you know gauge reactions we'll read some reader mail there'll be all sorts of stuff we're gonna do uh but today we're gonna be talking about uh Henry Cavill getting cast in the new Highlander movie uh but of course before we jump into anything we have to play the catalog game we can't do any episode the without the catalog game <gasps> the catalog game you're right you are right okay so I've got you're two welcome for that <laughs> I've got two items for you guys to guess today uh there we go i'm gonna do the here's the first one Boop. there we are oh boy oh boy what do we got we love it oh, 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 oh. the cavill law game so this uh the way this works is uh well normally i would read a description i mean none of the rules apply uh this is a painting an oil painting of mr henry cavill uh how much would you guys pay for this painting uh also to let you know it is 36 by 43 inches that's so this is like a full is this size. him as a particular character you why don't you tell me about what you think this is about <laughs> like i'm just trying to remember him in a mustache he was in a mustache in Mission Impossible. That was going to be my theory. Ghost on this. Protocol? Mm. Or is it? I don't know. Uh, 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 I don't remember what the movie's called. It's not Ghost Protocol. It's, okay. Um, I forget. What's the, what's the other one? There's one after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like Power World Fallout. or something. Fallout. Yeah, Fallout. Power Out. World? I don't Out. know. Where I Water can. World. Yeah. Water Very good. World. All right. So uh how much would i pay for this is zero how much do i think it's being charged for who goes yeah. first should i go first sure you can go, go first you started you got in five hundred dollars five hundred dollars for this beautiful oil painting of mystery miss mystery mr henry cavill mystery henry cavill yeah i would charge rent to this painting okay on my wall at the rate of thirty dollars per month okay uh at that rate, I could probably purchase the painting, I think, in 10 months. I think this is a $299 painting. All right. Ooh. Wow. It's, okay. a, it's a rent to buy situation. <laughs> in uh, fantastic. So for this 36 by 43 oil painting of Superman himself, Henry Cavill, uh, you would have to pay $2,804. Wow. Is this by someone of note or just I don't think so. I don't. Does it look like it's by someone of note? No. No. No, but I'm a Philistine. Yes. So that's uh It doesn't even look like Henry Cavill. Does it look like his mustache though? Yeah, if you'd asked me to identify what famous person that is, I would have said like, I don't know. <laughs> a smushed Tom Selleck. I'm not sure. Very it good. Looks like Timothy Dalton. Yeah, that's actually a better mustache all right well we got we got one more in the uh the cavill log game for you guys uh here we go <laughs> oh, 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 oh why are their faces so warped do you want to give us a rundown on who's in this painting eamon who, who we got for the, sharing sharing this canvas together so we yeah, got the, oh, Henry cavill as superman uh-huh robert downey jr as iron man right ben affleck as Batman, sure. He looks like That's he's wearing an outfit from Batman. Dune. Yeah, he looks yeah, like he he's does. like a Trades or something. This is all right. Whatever. That's nuts. Andrew yeah, Tom... Garfield 
as Spider-Man? Yeah, that does appear to be the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, <laughs> not the Tom Holland one. Why pick that one? Look at all that hair, guys. <laughs> Maybe it's a timing thing. Had the new Spider-Man not come out yet? I guess. Good question. That's Probably weird. not, though. No, no, no. They must have come out. When did Batman versus Superman come out? Because we got Batman. 2016. So when when was, uh, what's it called? Homecoming? Amazing Spider-Man. His first appearance would have been in Civil War, whenever that is. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm going to look it up. This is great. I love that we're looking That's up. That's also in 2016. Wow. All right. So this is like a unique time in, time in uh, American pop culture where Andrew Garfield was in the in the cinemas with like alongside uh, Henry Cavill, right? Momentous stuff, huh? Wow. wow. Momentous. What a time. And what a time to be alive. As yep. Logan. That's right. As Logan. Logan. All, I wish people at home could see these. They're like all their eyes are spaced very strangely and are either too big or too <laughs> small. Their eyes all look very wet and reflective, like they're <laughs> about to cry. Sure. Uh, this is wildly terrible. <laughs> this is just strong garbage. Well, Kyle, uh, how much uh, do you think uh, this painting goes for? All right. Well, he's going if, for if, currently. It's not if, sold. If an an oil painting of only Henry Cavill is two thousand dollars, and this has five times as many people, that's I feel right. Like Look at all the gonna, star power. I feel like this one's going to come in at a bargain at five hundred dollars per crying face, and it'll be <laughs> oh, okay. like twenty five hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. Damn. Mr. Amon. I'm going to guess five hundred dollars again. Again, five hundred dollars. All right. I have a question. Would you ever hang an oil painting of a superhero in your home? Never. Okay. Probably. No, I, I, I think that would be a bridge too far. Okay, I don't and it's funny because all of us have, like, nerdy art. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I don't want to say never. Like, I actually do think there probably is one. Like, I can't imagine it right now. I mean, like, sure, you could pay I, I, thousands I could... of dollars for an Alex Ross painting, right? Oh, yeah, like if some, like Alex Ross, famous comic book artist, does do oil paintings of his frames. Like, that's what they are. So, like, if I had the opportunity to have, like, a really good one of those, maybe. Like, they're just excellent. But not this. <laughs> no. No. I would only hang this. Okay, good. I actually, I, if this was cheaper, I would, if these were way cheaper, I'd buy all of them. Uh, so, the, the uh, Eamon, you guessed 500 Kyle, you guessed 2500 Actual retail price of the Henry Cavill Avengers Marvel Batman mashup, whatever this is, uh, is 1196 dollars so this one's much cheaper than the other one yeah All right, yeah and i'm just gonna say this because i i can't unsee it that <laughs> ben affleck in this looks like lutz from 30 rock oh my god he does if you know <laughs> that character uh Jesus. why is rdj an anime character in that painting he does like he's like hella anime he's got like the eyes yikes cool very cool did you see, see the this iron is a man anime cultured Demon? show i did not i did not either i saw most of the x-men one and it was just weird mostly but yeah i heard those anime marvel animes were bad they're not particularly good i i don't know that there's much to show up for marvel henry guys... cavill henry cavill. <laughs> all right so uh big news uh I henry guess cavill last week. oh mortal boy Kombat. Yeah. Uh, also, since this is our first like of these like reboot episodes, you know, we're gonna probably do these like right away uh, in the future, which will be you know exciting. Like as soon as news drops, we'll be uh, reporting on it. Wow, exciting stuff, right? Okay. Ooh. So, uh, Eamon, would you like to read a little of the story here? Yeah, Absolutely. The, the thing that brings us all together. Yeah, today. that's right. It brings us all together today. So, is this from Henry's Facebook? No, oh, I'm on the wrong the wrong screen here. Mm. Like a oh, because it put it backwards for some stupid reason. There we go. Backwards. Can you see Henry it? Henry Cavill to star in Lion Gate's Highlander reboot from Chad Stalhesky by Justin Kroll. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. In the world of Highlander films, there can be only one. And Henry Cavill has his eye, Cavill, whatever, has his eye on the title. Sources tell Deadline that the Man of Steel stars and talks for one of the lead roles in Lionsgate reboot of Highlander with John Wick director Chad Stileski helming. Kerry Williamson penned the script. 
in the world. Blah, blah, blah. Neil H. Moritz and Josh Davis are producing the project. Amanda Lewis, Patrick Waxberger, and Gregory Wyden. Oh, Gregory Wyden. Wyden out. Will executive produce. Peter Davis, the original producer of the first film, was also on board to produce before his death, rest in peace, this past February. The original 1986 Highlander pick starred Christopher Lambert, Sean Connery, and Clancy Brown as immortal beings hunting down one another and collecting more <laughs> power. The film, with its There Can Be Only One catchphrase, spawned four sequels and three television series, including the popular USA series starring Ad Adrian pa Paul. <laughs> Very good. I, I like the four different accents that you used to read just that last paragraph. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kyle, hit us up with uh, what Mr. Cavill wrote on his Facebook page. Yes, yeah, same day as that article. Very exciting news. I've been a fan of Highlander since I was a lad from the movies in all of their 80s queen slathered glory to the TV show with an actor who looked remarkably like one of my brothers. Uh, being not shy with swords and having a uh, director as talented as Chad Stahelski at the helm, this is an opportunity like no other. Deep diving into franchise storytelling with all the tools at our disposal is going to make this an adventure I, and hopefully all of you, shall never forget. As you see, uh, see from the swipe, I've already been dipping into some of my Scottish heritage and inadvertently getting my baseline research underway. Uh, and he posts some images of some books he's reading about kilts and whatnot and what appears to be some alcohol. A boom. So... It appears to be confirmed. He appears to be in. Okay, so guys, we have, we actually have not talked about this, which is yeah, we, incredible. Like they dropped this you're news. hearing this live. Yeah, none of us like texted each other, like which is crazy. But like we're like, oh my god, did you hear this stuff? So, uh, what? How'd you guys feel when you heard this? Was this a surprise? I imagine. I don't know. How was it? What would you think? Well, I'll say to cover this with all our reboot discussions, um, you know even though this seems like more like it's maybe going to happen. I like, there have been so many talks about Highlander reboots that I'm just kind of assuming it's not going to happen until like, I'm actually sitting in the movie theater watching it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but will it know. be, will it, will it be that far? Like, will it, you have seen trailers and you're like, nah, mm -hmm. this isn't, nah, this isn't happening. happening. They just made the trailer. This like, like for dream. Endgame, they just made a trailer. Yep. That's it. Somebody That's, scarecrow toxined me, and this is a dream. Mm. That's right. Killian Cillian Murphy shot that dust in my face with a yeah. bag on his head. That's right. Uh, but you know, I, I kind of was. I was like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Henry Henry Cavill. So important question, because if you had asked me this question before the pandemic, I would have said ugh. <laughs> but some things. But during the pandemic. I finally got around to watching The Witcher, mm. which has anybody seen that? I watched the first episode. I have okay. not seen any of it. Okay. Well, I will say, I think Henry Cavill does an amazing job in it. He's fighting with swords constantly and crushes <laughs> it. Ooh. It, like, I think it's actually, I now think it is a great bit of casting. Nice. And I, again, like, I do not like his version of Superman. I, I don't think I've liked almost anything else I've seen him in. But <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest. Like, it sure. just hasn't, not in a way that's like, not that he's been bad in them, but I've just been mm -hmm. like shrug, like completely forget about it as soon as I see it. Mm -hmm. But Witcher is a very good analogy for this. It's fantasy. It's like got a medieval look to it. And I think he nails it. I'm very on board as a cool. result. Uh, so... Also, and just, I think that getting, he's, he's a legit star right now. Like, yes. he's an, he's an action movie headliner. Like those DC movies for as bad as some of them are, <laughs> like they make a shit ton of money. Like sure. those make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Henry Cavill charges an aggressive sum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Like, I mean, I, his paintings I, are worth a lot. I imagine, uh, you know. Yeah, I think that's true. The fact that they've got like a amazing, like a director who everyone seems to think is kind of perfect for this, mm -hmm. lined up with a star of that caliber, like that makes it feel like this this train is is rolling. Like I, I think this is 
makes it more likely than it's ever been uh, by a wide margin because you know you've got like a premier action star with a premier action director basically now confirmed anyway premier. i've been talking for too long <laughs> <laughs> what if they make keanu reeves ramirez oh my god <laughs> i mean sure why not i mean who I, so uh i think i was surprised at first when i heard it i was like whoa like how about that like also because i haven't heard a lot of rumblings uh you know in the past couple months like mm. you know uh, all of a sudden boom highlander news right uh sure and I think like I, I, I was definitely taken aback by like, cause I think in, in your head, everyone has like, I mean, everyone obviously has Christopher Lambert in their head. Like, so things are measured against that to some degree. And Christopher Lambert next to uh, Henry Cavill is a very different like image, right? Uh, oh yeah. I, and yeah, I, just physically they're you're getting a different character. Right, right? and so, exactly to your point, Kyle. So like, it's a different character for sure, right? Like, so like his casting also, I think tells us something a bit about the movie. Uh, I mean, frankly, the, the choice of director tells us a bit about the movie, doesn't it? Uh, mm. You know, um, he's an action hero. I mean, his, his character, like we know from Chad's interviews that he like appreciated the series as well. And I think he even mentioned the books at some point, like he was a fan mm -hmm. uh, and talked about like trying to combine these mythologies to some degree, not like verbatim, like we're like literally putting them together, but like there are larger concepts in the, the series and stuff, which is cool. Like the watchers and, you know, uh, and I think he is planning on like dipping into that. Uh, so it's not really surprising to to see someone like Henry Cavill cast, who's like perhaps more of a Duncan McLeod like physique. It's, but it's like I don't, so. I don't assume he will be playing Duncan McLeod. Uh, I mean, who knows what characters are necessarily going to be in this movie? Uh, I've heard rumblings of some, uh, but you know, uh, mm. whatever. Like if this is the new Connor McLeod, it's fine. Uh, I mean. Who would have ever thought that like kind of a a shy or like introverted like scruffy Frenchman would have been the like the premier choice for Highlander? And now people compare Henry's casting to that, and that doesn't make any sense to me. It's like that's just a different character. Like, yeah, I, anyway, it, it Kirk is... Douglas or Kirk Douglas, Michael Douglas, Michael Douglas. None of these are the correct. Kurt people. Russell. Kurt Russell. <laughs> like I'm bouncing all over the place. Uh, guys, imagine Douglas. Kirk Douglas. Oh yeah, is I'm Kurt a, Russell. Is Kirk Douglas still alive? Is he like 105? No, he's he's dead. He did die. Uh, yeah. Ramirez, right? Come on. Uh, yeah, a 90 year old Ramirez. Um, Kurt. Anyway, Russell. you're making a point about Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. That yes, like obviously Highlander would have been a very, I think, very different film if he had been cast as the role of Connor McCloud. So like, I don't know. I think it's always good to like put you take yourself back and like imagine what like you your reaction would have been like to the original hearing this news. You know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, I think it is worth acknowledging what kind of a wild bit of casting Lambert is. Yeah, like it's it's just kind of like a a bold swing that I guess seems to have worked out. Like, I think people are ultimately very into it, mm -hmm. but you know, an odd choice to say the least, yeah. uh, but it worked. So, you know, yeah, it is an odd benchmark for what this comparison will be. Right. Yeah. And so, I don't know, uh, we're, we're going to do a couple little segments on this show, which I, I hope will be interesting. And I've, I don't know your opinions on any of this stuff. Uh, but I, I hope we can like tackle like, I don't know, some more interesting, deeper like conversations about like what reboots are and like, what do they mean to fans? Cause obviously fans have had like reactions to this stuff. So we're going to do a thing that we've never really done on this show before. We'll kind of only do them for uh, these sort of reboot episodes, but it's to kind of gauge some fan reactions and, you know, uh, we're obviously not using anybody's names or anything. Uh, so these were taken publicly off of, you know, the internet, uh, how people reacted to this news of Henry's casting. And so, yeah. Send I, I names I, after. That's right, yeah. Private. I'm gonna, so we can all write them. I'll put everybody's email address out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hope like, I, I tried to pick some comments. Obviously there were some comments that were excited about it, mm -hmm. uh, but like people are concerned or upset. And I thought if those comments are exemplary of like the larger Highlander fan base, it might be worth like exploring them a bit and being like, why, why are people feeling this way about this? And I hope as our role as a show here uh, with Highlander moving forward is to like, 
maybe have some honest discussions about like what the fandom is and what our role in it should be as like super fans. Cause obviously there's a lot of people out that are like nuts about Highlander and that's cool. Right. Uh, but like things change. So anyway, I'm going to just uh, read there, some before you, <laughs> yeah. before you read to read them, mm -hmm. you said you, you posited if they are representative of like the wider fandom right and i don't know exactly how you called these but is there reason to assume that they are or uh, some have more not? likes and not likes than others some appear like algorithms tend to like put things that get comments higher up those sort of things uh but these aren't like any sort of official polls or anything like that and maybe that's actually something we can do as a podcast moving forward on our facebook page is do some more polls about this stuff uh and then talk about those questions, uh, yeah. which would be interesting. So I'm just gonna read, these are in no particular order. I didn't have time to like, I was gonna categorize these, but I don't know, I've got some discussion questions uh, we can go through too. So anyway, this is like a homework assignment, guys. I've got discussion questions. Yeah. Woo. Did, are, how many participation points is Eamon gonna get? Uh, zero. So, okay, <laughs> zero, yeah. zero so far. Yeah. Wait, um, okay. I just wanna say something real quick. Yeah, so I, yeah. Did a, I did an unofficial, like just, Feel in the water poll on our Instagram. Oh, uh, cool, cool. And I just put the headline: uh, Henry Cable to star in Cavill and Lionsgate's Highlander reboot. <laughs> and I just had yes or no. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. That's, okay, that's straight ahead. I like it. Yeah, eighty-six percent said yes. They like oh, this. Look at that. Eighty-six percent. That's yeah, a lot. How many responses? Fourteen percent no. Let's see if I don't know if I can find that out. I'll, I'll try to figure that out. That's um, cool. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, all right. Well, this so, goes out to the 14%, I guess, that are uh, upset or say <laughs> no, or who knows. Uh, so the yeah. first comment is, I don't want a reboot. Love the original. Would like a continuation of that story slash universe. New characters, different timelines, etc." Wait, what? I don't know. I don't understand I the difference. How is it, is it different timelines if whatever? Or does it mean flashbacks or something, I think, maybe. So a continuation of the original, but with all new characters. It's like, no. okay, also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read, the, I'm gonna read the, these in the, also the original ends. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. So, right, like if you discount, like unless you want a sequel to Highlander three, but is right. That what so, so uh, let's stop right there and just say like, there's already problems with this sort of criticism, right? Like it doesn't make yeah. sense, right? To some yeah. degree, right? Because the story is over <laughs> okay. like six <laughs> different ways. Like it's yes. either over because High because Connor won the game and won. It's over because you're in the future with a shield dystopia and maybe he goes back to Zeist. I don't know. It's over because after Highlander three and four, Duncan cuts his goddamn head off. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Like there's there's really no path forward that I can sure, see. Sure, it's crazy. All right, here's another comment. Can't say I'm on board with this. The original was one of a kind and it should be left alone. The original was five of a kind, <laughs> maybe six. But I guess leave it alone. Not leave him alone. Like uh, leave Brittany it alone. alone. It is yeah. being left alone. It's on your shelf in a DVD case. Mm -hmm. It's left alone. But let's let's like actually talk about. Sorry, I'm making jokes about this. Like, this, there it's is kind the, of our thing. Sure, but like there there does seem be, seem to be this concept, and this is uh, there was a TV? lot of comments that uh, there were also like literally hundreds and hundreds of comments. So like at, at first when I started this project, I wanted to like grab all of them and try to categorize them. Like, oh, this many people are like don't leave the original alone. Like somehow the reboot affects the original. Let's talk about that. Like what? Interesting. Well. You know, I think there is, there's this thing that fans do sometimes where they say like, I didn't like this so much that it ruins the original or like right. it, it somehow like goes back in time and affects the original in some way. Right. And I think that's like a, th there's a certain almost failure of discipline in those kinds of things. It's like, you can't just like keep things separated. Right. Like I love a new hope. I love that movie. It's a great movie. I could watch that anytime. It's sure. so wonderful. There have <laughs> been many bad Star Wars properties that have been released over the years, in my view. I don't know. None of them affect the extent to which I think that's a good movie. Sure. Right? Like, it's still a good movie. Mm -hmm. Even with, like, and, like, even though I think the, the real risk is when you, like, introduce continuity problems, which the prequels completely did. But still, whatever. Mm -hmm. You just, like, you just turn it off. You just don't if you don't like it, you just don't have to engage with it. Sure. Yeah, like you can watch a sequel and then just 
go home and say, I didn't like the sequel. I'll never watch it again. <laughs> it's okay. yeah, and like, and like reboots are even more distinct, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't even purport to occupy the same, the same bandwidth. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's a parallel universe in which Henry Cavill is Connor McCloud and never the two shall be. There's not right. going to be a version of end game where Connor cuts his head off. Like, right. Or Lambert cuts his head off. Like it's not going to happen. So it's just like, whatever, just ignore it is my general thing. Yeah, right. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit later, I think, as we, we talk uh, about this more about like, I think there are some concerns that people have and I think I understand them to some degree, but we'll get into it a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna read another quote. Uh, Guy's amazing, but just leave the franchise alone. Everything after the series already killed the mystique. Except <laughs> this says mystique. Mystique. Yeah. My, my favorite, favorite X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Uh, and then here's another. These are these these were when I was trying to pair these all together. Mm -hmm. I wish they would leave well enough alone. You don't see people making remaking Gone with the Wind or Casablanca. So why remake everything that was good before? Now this one is interesting. I like this comment. I I mean I shouldn't say I like this comment. I like the 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 conversation we can have around this comment. Uh, this is a more thoughtful version of some of these other ones. Sure, no. I still don't agree with it. Uh, but I, I think, why don't you see pe people remaking Gone with the Wind? Well, because it's not a story that sh maybe should be retold. Or like, like I think we well, should- Also, I would, I would dispute the fact that in things like that that don't have like overt fantasy universes, I dispute the notion that they don't get remade every day. Yes. Those movies, we just don't call them Casablanca. Exactly. But people are retelling stories with those themes and those character archetypes every goddamn day. Absolutely. It's just not, it's just, more, there's nothing so unique about them that it needs to be a copy of it or, right. you know, like set in the Casablanca universe. Right. And there are reasons why we do that. Why, why at some point it becomes important to say like, we should retell that story again. And mm -hmm. they do that and they call it the exact same thing, even though there's maybe movies that are like it, but like, mm -hmm. it's just told again. Uh, so <laughs> I wish they'd leave well enough alone. Again, no one's touching the original thing. It is in a box on your TV to watch, like it's fine. Uh, may as well, Cavill ruined my other childhood favorite. May as well do the other one too, it says. Oh boy. Is that it's Superman? Like, I, I assume guess. Superman. It's- um, I, I don't the, think anything that's wrong with those movies is particularly Cavill's fault, but- But yeah. it doesn't ruin anyone's childhood. Yeah. <laughs> it's so like, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, how do you Maybe. guys- Maybe Henry got in a time machine and went back and ruined that guy's specific childhood. Oh, he could. Like, well, Superman, he can spin the planet around, right? He I, does I, that I, two I, times. I, <laughs> There's I like other to, movies. I like to imagine that, I, I have to assume that person's talking about like the Richard Donner movies, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. I have to assume, which actually personally, I have no particular affection for. As I don't either. Super, I, I, I don't really care for them very much. Uh, which is blasphemous to some, but I like to imagine that somebody who like grew up in the thirties listening to the Superman radio hour, right. when right. like, when the Richard Donner ones came out, like who's this fucking guy who's yeah. ruining my childhood? This Gene Hackman clown. Like, yeah, right? That's not my Lex Luthor, right? Yeah. yeah. He's not like, like a mad scientist or something like older versions might've been, or like, I, I don't know. I just, these characters are also, like there's so many characters that are retold so many times. Sure. I, it, I find it so strange when people hone in on a definitive one. Well, that's that's part of it too, is that like, I think as part of like celebrating Highlander as like a franchise or wanting it to have a mythology, we need a reboot. Like we, you can't have a mythology that's, without like retelling stories. Like that's, we're almost depriving Highlander of its like position in a cultural lexicon because we won't let it be retold. I don't know. That's my biggest, that's honestly my biggest thing about all this is that like Highlander is not an active franchise with like, you know, it has a small but rabid fandom, which, you know, we are members of and, you know, we like how intimate it is in some ways, but at the same time, it's like, it is not and never was all that popular, right? Like, it's not like it's a thing that made it and they're trying, like, Tr in the in the largest sense of the word like it's still trying to bust into the wider conversation with like normies on the street sure 
Uh, no, it's it's like a cult thing, and I I, yeah, I yeah. can I can understand like the you know I can understand how some people might be upset that this thing that was like their little thing that had like a small right group maybe becomes a big thing and then you know that that's kind of where I my understanding stops because I'm like okay I, I like losing that like small community that's something I could see lamenting yeah I, I think like, so all right I'm on board with that hmm? more more people than liking your thing when people get mad about that that's when like I kind of lose the plot a little bit yeah, you don't want to be gatekeepery. That's weird. yeah, right. Like the the prime example I have is is Dragon Ball Z. Like Ooh, when I was okay. a kid, I saw this cartoon Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, "This cartoon." I've never awesome. heard of it. Yeah, nobody knew what it was. Like I remember one day, me and my dad went to all these stores looking for like toys or comics or whatever, and there was some anime store in They're South. Called Street. manga. Yeah, manga. <laughs> that like doesn't exist anymore and they had like one tape and it wasn't for sale and like they had like a vegeta toy and i bought that but it was like nobody knew what i was talking about when i talked about it in school they were like dragon balls, <laughs> dragon balls. but when You're i did like find... no that was the first series yeah man that's right you know then i when i did find somebody it felt like kind of special and now dragon ball z is like like really popular here it was yeah. already popular around the world you know, I'm not mad that like this thing I liked is popular and everybody knows what it is now. Like, you sound pretty mad about it. I'm very mad. Hey, do you? I need, I need you to lower your voice. <laughs> but but to some degree, like perhaps the reason you liked it is for a different reason that newer fans like it, right? Yeah. Like you you discovered it differently. Like there was a process right. to you discovering it and learning about the show, which mm -hmm. like you said, it wasn't popular here. So like I'm sure you I'm I'm reading into things, but like did you do like a lot of internet research to like oh, find yeah. right? Like yeah. that's a that's a whole different experience, like understanding like a thing that you're a fan about than being like, oh, there's giant posters for it. It's like a Marvel movie, and like boop, 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 like all the characters are shoved in your face, you know everything about them, and like there it is, right? Like, yeah, I feel like your experience is is very different. Like, uh, so I could see, like, I don't want to say use the word jealousy, but like the things you appreciate about the property are enmeshed with like your experience with it, right? Like you're the way you discovered it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So I can see why people get upset. Yeah. But like at, at the same time, I'm like, you know. I mean, this is ultimately like like they just want to make money. They just want to make a movie that makes money. That's yeah. all it is. I mean, no shit. But like, sure. Like, what what property hasn't been like these these movie companies look at every property they own and like try to exploit it. Like, mm -hmm. RoboCop shouldn't have been remade. Like, sorry. Like, I'm like, <laughs> that's a masterpiece. Yeah. You know what? I was excited for a RoboCop remake. I was too. And it was it was bad. Yeah. The problem the problem with that movie was it had nothing to say. Right. And the original RoboCop had something to say and was mm -hmm. dark and well, weird. I think the, I thought the reboot had something to say. I don't think it was a great movie though. I yeah, no. It, I to me it felt like a an empty it, it was an empty shirt. Perhaps. It, like it had just enough to be like, oh, this is the equivalent to like those insane ads or something like that. <laughs> right, right. Like, like they had like the, I don't know, what's his name? Samuel Jackson was like a Glenn Beck kind of figure. Right. I guess. But like he was doing from, those Capital One ads in the middle of the, the movie. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. But, I, I've never seen it. Yeah. But it, uh, it's it's just a nothing thing. But like a, a ver there is a version of like a RoboCop reboot that's like really prescient. And like well, that, that's I mean I while I might not have liked the, liked the movie, I think I would disagree, Kyle, because I thought they did try to make it like more prescient with like the drone stuff, and it's like mm -hmm. okay, that's like that's why we're retelling this. It's like it has less to do with like I don't know the the, the issue of like violence without humanity is like at the fore to some degree when that movie came out and still is right. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, I think it had something it could was trying to say about that, uh, mm -hmm. but. That is the very first question I had in my notes, which is, as Eamon brought up, like, why make a, why do a reboot? Let's talk about that real quick. And you mentioned money, Eamon. Well, I think that's the number yes. one. I think that's why things get selected for reboots. Right. Is, and like, I don't know what, Highlander's just a fallow franchise. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it, it hasn't done anything of note for most of our lifetimes. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So why not? Like, why not? Yeah, My, and as far as I'm concerned, it's it's literally been 20 years since 
like a, a movie came out in the theaters. Yeah. So fuck it. <laughs> so fuck it. Yeah. Uh, but let, let's talk about, uh, Eamon, I think you also mentioned that, or one of you mentioned that like every property seems to be rebooted to some degree. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I jotted True down enough. like a couple, you know, that have been rebooted. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about these because they're, I think for the most part, fairly successful. Uh, so we have like a star is born. Uh, there's Which like been four, rebooted five times or five, five of those throughout like all of film's history, which is crazy. Uh, Many, and pretty much almost all of them are kind of beloved, aren't they? Yeah, they're all like, good. They're because yeah. they all like kind of have something different to say, and like it's it's good that those are uh redone. Godzilla and King Kong just got released again, uh, <laughs> and I guess is doing well or something. I don't know. Something, People I like those know. movies, they've made a bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> how many like vampire and Dracula movies are there? Unlimited. Too many, too many. Infinite. But like, but like, infinite. We have Twilight. We've got uh, Blade. We've like all these like versions. Underworld. Of it. That's right. Underworld with uh, what's his name? Um, uh, what's the director's name of Underworld? Oh, um, Len. Is it Len? Um, Len Wiseman. Len Wiseman. Yikes. Uh, very good. Um, but like all those stories are like retold to, to tell some different aspect of like the character, right? Like either it's in modern day or like there, there's just like spins on the mythology, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like Star Wars or Indiana Jones to a degree are like kind of re like they're not reboots, but like they're homages to an old they're thing. And it's like almost like resurrections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they come, there's like waves of them. Uh, we have stuff like, I don't know, the Magnificent Seven. Uh, which yeah. say what you will about like them, uh, them, like Hollywood executives being like, we need to take a foreign property and redo it for a, an American or English speaking audience. Uh, while I do think there's issues with that, like there's no question that there's like a reason behind it though, right? Like mm -hmm. we need to take this story and like the only way to sell it to these people is they think that like it needs to get translated into a new language or a new context. Like they're it's cowboys, make... they're not samurai. Right, yeah. I don't know. Uh, fucking West Side Story is coming out, what, next year or this year sometime? Uh, mm. That's getting remade. And like, that's an important one to be remade. Like, it's, a, again, a beloved classic, I suppose. Kind of. Uh, but like, I don't know how many movies you like to watch where the actors are in brown face. Like, you know, yeah. like, that's just not cool. And like, hey, I love West Side Story. I think the music's great, the dancing's great, the like everything about it. Like, but like, would I prefer not to see actors in brown face? Like, you know, uh, speaking you of like- You had your druthers? Yeah, like, that's great. Sure, who gives a shit? Like, also like, I don't get upset. I've seen West Side Story like on the stage. I don't go and like, oh, they fucking remade the fucking stage play. And now this, the under the understudies, the, the guy, like they ruined it. Like, this isn't my Tony. I don't know, like- Hashtag not my Tony. Yeah, not my Tony, right? <laughs> Not my Tony. <laughs> uh, what other ones? True Git. True Grit. True Guess, Git. True Git. That that remake knocks Great. the shit out of the original. John Wayne blows in that movie. Yeah. It's awful. He's terrible. Of course they remade it. Jeez. Anyway, uh, any other good ones? Guessing any good re re remakes? The Blob? The blob. Ooh, the blob is a good one. The blob is great. And also like a new context for it, right? It's suddenly like biological weapons and like it means something different retelling that story. Uh, Probably the best remake ever is The Thing, John Carpenter's The, the thing. thing, right? That's yeah. great. That's, a, and then that's they, an interesting one. Or The Fly, to, another yeah. of that ilk, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, fucking Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. yeah. I'll even say to some degree, st the Star Wars trilogies, right? Like are in like they deal with like they came out at vastly different times, like almost 20 years apart, right? Uh, that these like three sets of trilogies and like the first one's about like good and evil and the Cold War and this sort of stuff. And then suddenly like and that's obviously commentary on what's going on at the time. And then the prequel trilogies exist in like, you know, post September 11 or September 11th, war in Iraq, all this sort of stuff. And it's about like politics and getting involved in wars and it's like oh shit like there was a reason to tell a story i mean i don't really like the prequels but like it has something new to say nope. and it wants to like tell it in a new context right uh and i would argue that the the new star wars trilogy is also like an updated ver it's not good and evil anymore it's more gray and like there's re like these stories are all products of their time uh these properties or whatever and i think it's like sometimes good as fans to like take a step back and be like wait a minute like what is Highlander uh, like, and how does it exist in this context? So that brings me to my next question, guys, is like, what, like, why is, why is this reboot needed 
in particular, besides making money, like I mentioned West Side Story has like brown face in it and there, there's just stuff. So like, what about the original Highlander movie like kind of needs to change to be updated? Like we want people to love it, right? Like, and kids today or young people, like when they go to a movie, they expect kind of X, Y, and Z. And so what do we think doesn't fly in Highlander anymore? I'll stick, I'll- Is, I'll wait, is that, is that the, con is the, con is that the substance of the question or? What doesn't fly is the question, not what about it do you think should be different in a remake? Uh, we could talk about them separately. I understand what you're saying. They are kind of slightly different questions. Uh, and I think actually this was, I didn't read the comment. There's, there, I, have, I have a bunch of comments written here. Uh, somebody did mention that like, no, they should just like re-release Highlander and like they shouldn't, they shouldn't remake it. They should just like do an advertising campaign and be like, here it is, here's this old movie and it's back in the theater. And I was like, wait a minute. like, Has that ever worked? No, for anything like, that isn't a, if for anything that isn't a Disney movie. Sure. Uh, but for instance, I'll kick us off and say the F word. How about that in a movie? Like, do I want to see a movie where, you know, like a large portion of like the audience is about to be confronted with like a horrible homophobic slur? Fuck off. No, I don't want to see that. Like, no way. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's something that certainly is an easy update because it's not at all relevant to the story. Sure. It's not, I mean, like, it, these are things that, like, detract from, I don't know. <sighs> Let me put this in a slightly different context. I obviously have been, like, I don't want to say upset about this, but, like, thinking a lot about, like, the, these notions of, like, what, what is our fandom rooted in or, like, what are the origins of it and, like, how does it change, right? So, like, I think we've all had experiences, like, sharing a movie with someone younger than us, right? Like, a cousin or a friend and, like, hey, like, this is one of my favorite movies and you put it in and they, like, are, like, eh, it was all right. You know, you didn't like fucking love it, like, but I fucking love it. And like, you don't like, here we are watching it together. I'm enthusiastic, you're not. Why? And it's like, well, because like the context in which that film exists for like that person is so different than it existed for you. So for instance, I'll continue with my blabbling, blabbling, uh, blabbling. like New York is a hellhole in Highlander. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it's, it doesn't look that way. Like, you know, like you would be confronted every day on the news with like murders in New York, summer of Sam, like all this sort of shit, the, the graffiti, just like the landscape of New York is different. And so you understand that world. You also understand the cold war. Like we talked a lot about Highlander existing in this, this context of like cold war, uh, cold war analogy. And it might not, it doesn't have to be overt, but it's in the zeitgeist of everybody watching it. So like when they see themes of like, I don't know, the song Hammer to Fall comes on. We know what that song's about because everyone is like, I don't know, we all might die in a horrible explosion. Yeah, like there's like a nihilism. Right. To these, like I can like, like these movies that Right. Even even if I'm not like as like sad as Connor McLeod seems to be, like I understand that nihilism and that like defeat that feels like it's all out of my hands. Like this this isn't good, right? Like, mm. but kids today or younger people might not have that same reaction or in different ways. Maybe it's about environmentalism, right? Like that's a different sort of like, I, I can't change anything, right? I, Ooh, I don't know how have to- you, <laughs> Have you heard of Highlander 2? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but again, like that's how people like can approach this movie. And like, there are these things that like, I, I guess are perhaps unspoken uh, that like communicate with the audience. And I think it's easy when we're, well, now 30 years away from a, a, uh, the release of an initial thing and we loved it and grew up with it that like, we take for granted that like our cultural experiences are like what made us love that thing in the first place. Uh, I don't know, uh, film noir even, like the style of that movie. Like, do kids know what film noir is? I use the word kids very loosely, uh, but young people. I mean, sure, maybe if they're like a film buff, but do they really know? Am I talking way too much, guys? <laughs> you're, you're definitely on a tear. Sure um, I am. You know, I do think noir is something that's like, even when things pull noir elements, it doesn't, like they don't import things like how apathetic and kind of shitty the main characters normally are. Like yeah. that's, not, that's not a thing that carries over. And like Connor's in that tradition because he just kind of seems like he is like, fuck it, I want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. Like th there are aspects of it that don't, that aren't still part of like modern movie going. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I think you, you mentioned even the apathy. Like, our heroes are perhaps less apathetic now, right? Like, yeah. I mean, when I watch Highlander, like, do, compared to, like, fucking Tony Stark in an, like, uh, Avengers movie, like, he's a guy who's like, I gotta get fucking shit done. Like, I don't give up. And, like, 
we have a hero in Highlander that has given up that like is just like locked away he's an old man like I don't know like I feel like those are things that like don't feel heroic perhaps to a to a younger audience or something right like I don't know it's all stuff to consider right yeah uh because I don't know I think if anyone out there has shown this movie to anyone and they had like a lackluster response like there's your reason for the reboot right like right there mm. like hey like the people aren't connecting with this film like uh i mean obviously not everyone's gonna love whatever movie but like i don't know uh even the kurgan i think has like what's what's the kurgan's motivation in highlander well that's something honestly that's the thing that perhaps like at least in terms of core elements age is the worst sure it's just like i don't know people expect more out of a villain well I exactly i mean you you could even go all the way back to star wars and say like well what's the motivation and like i i don't mind it i don't think all like villains need like hardcore motivations like it's just like good versus evil but even that notion is perhaps not a contemporary movie uh like you know a uh, setup or whatever like that it's just good versus evil like no it's too gray now right like all yeah. movies deal with that uh, like that that conflict of like what to do and what's right and like yeah uh, making tough choices but like it's it's not uh, the older movies don't display it that way again products of their time perhaps the USA and Russia right it's just good versus fucking evil uh, hmm. hmm hmm all right what's yeah. the next right. question uh let's see uh <laughs> I'm like let's see oh I did have a this is a, a weird question um, do you guys think that the Kurgan carries any weird cultural like baggage with him today as an icon? Mm, I, I don't think he's important enough to interesting. To, to I, carry the only the reason I bring this baggage. and I, I I think most people don't know about it. I, this is something we've I don't know if we've ever addressed on the show before, but like the Kurgan as like an avatar on like message boards tells mm. you uh, sometimes a lot about what's about to be said. If that makes sense, you want to? It uh, no, I don't. But uh, oh, <laughs> interesting. Have well, you seen just, any of this, Eamon, or am I? I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, maybe it, maybe it's across my eyeballs, but I. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of just like sexism and like just some like awful stuff, and I I notice a lot. Like the Kurgan is an oft used uh, avatar in on these like websites. I mean, maybe this is from a few years ago, uh, but it's like, oh, like what's going on here? Like, why do people identify with this character? Well, I know he's a terrible, terrible uh, person who like rapes people. So interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, That's not a, not a movie thing anymore. Uh, like bad guys and raping. Raping. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's out. That yeah. Goes. See, that yeah. needs to go. Uh, um, so how about, how's this sound? So why don't we talk a little bit about what themes you think could be in a new Highlander movie? Like, well, let's, let's bring it back to the reboot. So we got a reboot coming presumably with Henry Cavill. And like, if we don't think like the cold war isn't going on right now, like what, what are, what are things that Highlander might be tapping into today that will resonate with new audiences and old perhaps? Well, I mean, I think the most obvious one is the kind of environmentalism of it. Yeah, like, there's like that's like the at least in terms of young people, like that's the looming crisis that they think about. Sure, like they think more about that than they think about terrorism. Yeah. And when I brought up environment, people younger than us. Yeah, and when I brought up like environmentalism, I wasn't talking about a Highlander two style. Like I think the environment should be the plot. I just meant the the notion that like I think people today can feel like I don't know what to do because I can't change the world, and that to me feels very similar to the original Highlander. Uh, right. As far as there's a font of hopelessness. Yeah, right. The hopelessness. It. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think perhaps like the ability to change over time is something that maybe would uh, seem very prescient today. Like it's okay. Yeah. Like redemption, I think, is yeah. something on everyone's mind. And like, yeah, we live in a world of like a lot of fallen heroes and people mm -hmm. trying to make comebacks and, mm -hmm. you know, accountability yeah. is perhaps another permutation of that. we all just went through over now a year of like quarantining and sicknesses and awful things i mean i think the notion of like surviving through hardship is something that like is i mean always i think resonates with people but particularly now like the whole world went through a thing uh and is coming out the other side and so i don't know that could resonate with people uh i think being an outcast is something that like the the original deals with a little bit uh but i think i could definitely see a new one like leaning into those themes more uh who knows i mean also the sky's the limit like i don't want to like in general when we have these discussions like i have kind of no judgment until i start like 
either see a trailer to some degree, but also guess what? Like the person who makes the movie doesn't make the trailer 90% of the time. That's so like, very true. who, like, yeah. I, I can't even judge that to some degree. I can get excited about it or whatever, but like, I don't anticipate passing much or any judgment on anything until I see the movie. Like, we don't know what anything is going to be, what the story is, what the theme, the music, like the whole image, right? Like the whole package. Like people actually, just because I'm obviously ranting and raving about this, like people were pretty excited, I think, when Chad was brought on board to direct. Yes? No? Perhaps? Yeah, I think so. What was your I general that, vibe, right? That was that was generally a positive reaction. Right. And I, again, just, I get just a hunch. It seems like the casting of Henry Cavill seems to be largely negative. And it's like, well, you do know that one person individual, like not according to that sample Eamon took. Yeah, that's, that is true. Uh, but people seem divided or something. I mean, maybe, maybe it's again, people that are upset about it are always the most vocal. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, I, I do wonder, like, you know, if we trust Chad, he's in charge, right? And it's like, well, he has a vision of this. And if he thinks Henry fits into that vision, like, okay, fine. Like, and I will judge Chad's vision later, I suppose, uh, right? Like, but like yeah. before yeah. that, it's not it's not really worth it. Um, all right, so that brings us to how we have like healthy conversations about like reboots, fandoms, all this sort of stuff. And so I had written down a couple like notes just ponderings about why people would be upset. And so Eamon, you have mentioned some of this before uh, and I wanted to kind of dig more into it. Like, I feel like some people like th when they say that like, is this, this is ruining the original, ruining my childhood. Like there, there's some notion that they feel like their experiences are being erased, I imagine. And I don't know why it's, is it because everyone's forming new experiences and doesn't need to like ask them like, you know like they had something special. They had an insight into Highlander, 1986, right? And in some ways, only those people who grew up in those circumstances like have that insight, right? And now like everyone's gonna think of Highlander in this, these new terms. And I think it can make you feel like left out uh, to some degree. Not to mention like the way like Highlander has been built. We've, I've asked this question on the show before and I don't think we've ever really figured out an answer. Like what, what properties have like required a reboot because they like, they break themselves down. And to some degree Highlander has done that, uh, but perhaps for different reasons. Like I see all this, these kind of cool conversations on the fan sites and stuff. And we have interesting conversations, I think about like, well, what do you think? Like, can, a, can an immortal get sick? Can an immortal like, these are the things that like, these questions are begged by the mythology the show is set up but also it's fake right this isn't the real like the real universe doesn't operate by these rules so there's at some point like we can have fun and explore our imaginations uh to some degree but at some point like things will just stop making sense right like does this make sense no like you can't keep <laughs> building the world and like you know what i mean because like the, it doesn't exist in reality anymore like how does teleporters work in star trek right like you can only explore that to so many degrees before it just like doesn't really fit into like our understanding of the world right mm -hmm. uh, or it starts conflicting with other stuff that it's already been set up right because we're building we're kind of scaffolding this mythology as we go right i mean the original highlander is a pretty simplistic story with very few rules but like by the time you get to highlander endgame there's all these other rules and like they're conflicting each other because we're not sure where it all belongs so like you have to kind of just wipe the canvas clean and start over. And I sometimes think that people are upset, maybe, I don't know. Also, I don't want this to seem like, I I, I know I'm, I'm making assumptions here, what people might be thinking or anything like this. Uh, so if this is what you, how you like view the, uh, the franchise, uh, I guess, ignore what I'm saying. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think people like invest a lot of time in, thinking about Highlander, right? And they've been thinking about it since 1986, right? And they watch the series and they see all the builds and they write fan fiction and they're all invested in this. But like Star Wars, when they're like, oh, we're gonna eliminate all this other stuff, like the stuff that wasn't movies, all the books, like fans get all upset because like, hey, I invested time into this. Like either I purchased like my money, I spent time learning about it. And then I invested my like own creative energy into like spinning new stuff out of it. Uh, and I think that can like hurt people, I think. I think, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like why people do get so upset uh, because to me, it seems a little foreign. I don't know. To be well, like this bugged about a movie. Yeah, I mean, people do form heavy attachments to like almost like the more obscure an aspect of some of this stuff is people get very attached to it. Like mm -hmm. the books, like the Star Wars books are a great example. Like we all knew someone growing up who was like, obsessed with those books sure and like knew everything and to fly to to telegraph what we're going to be doing later um actually is you about something that took place in the book ah. you know what i mean 
well, actually, Boba Fett has met Han Solo <laughs> right. before. It, it's like, okay, all right, whatever you say. Um, and I, you know, I think it's, I think it's about time investment and like, you know, when people hit a certain level of fandom, it like becomes part of like what they do. It's right. like part of it's like a part of an identity thing. Exactly. Totally. I think people do identify with like their fandoms of whatever it might be. Right. I'm a Star Trek fan. I'm a Star Wars fan. I like Batman. I like Wolverine, whatever it is like. Right. Like that becomes like it says something about your character. Uh, and I do suppose with a reboot, uh, you know, when you say I like Highlander and they go to the reboot. That person perhaps assumes a bunch of stuff about you because, oh, you like Highlander, the reboot. I know the, the reboot. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. You, you assume the wrong stuff about me because I actually like the 86 Highlander, right? So like when it gets wrapped up in, I think, someone's identity, it becomes, uh, yeah, I think you worry about losing that because now like when you identify with that thing, people aren't, aren't seeing it the same way, right? They see you differently, uh, even though you're identifying with the same thing. I don't know. Uh, how about that? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, also, well, I think it's a movie, right? Like, uh, we podcast, we invest maybe more time than we should uh, talking about Highlander. I don't know. Like, but it's a movie at the end of the day. And like, I don't know. I can't get too upset about a movie. And if I am, I do want to ask myself, why is the movie upsetting me so much? Like, what is about this movie? Like, what is it saying? What's it, what mm -hmm. like nerve is it hitting with me? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but like, we can't, it's a movie. It's a movie. Uh, and hell, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe it'll, I think a lot of people do believe in Highlander. I think that's why, like, I think people are, Eamon, you said at the top, like, I'll believe it mm -hmm. when I see it kind of thing. I, yeah. I agree. Like anything could happen, uh, you know, between now and it coming out or another, someone, Henry signing another contract to do 400 mm -hmm. Superman movies for a bajillion more dollars. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's because people are still interested and believe in Highlander that it has persisted this long. Like it's, it's no wonder we were, I don't see we're getting like dragged, like waiting, they are waiting for this thing to come out. But I think it's because, yeah, people want to see it happen. And even if this doesn't go great, like, I don't think Highlander's over. It's too cool of a concept. So I don't know. Very good. Mm. Yeah. Are you guys it's feeling positive? Concept. Are you I excited? About, I feel great about yeah. this. Yeah. I think this is great. Like I said, like, I think Henry Cavill's good casting. We all like the director. Like, I don't know. Those are two good pieces. Sure. Already yeah. in place. Like, it's hard to say, but why not be excited? Yeah, why right? not be excited, right? Like, don't don't lose your goddamn mind, but like, <laughs> right. be excited. Like, sure. I don't know. It's, that also just signals the level of investment in this property. Yes. Because you don't get people like this if you're not committing to trying to do it. Right. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Or at least like investing the money that is a prerequisite to you know, certain aspects of quality. Yeah, and I think, then, oh, good. And no, and just, you know, why not be a little bit excited about that? Sure. Like, if it ends up not being good, whatever, you, it'll be okay. Like, yeah, at least at the end of the day, you got to eat like a bucket of popcorn and drink like a bunch of corn syrup and that's fine, right? And maybe before Sit it in the air conditioning, out, a bunch of people will Google, Google what the hell is Highlander along the way. Like, sure, yeah. Happen. I will say also, uh, like you said, Kyle, the, the casting of him signifies like a level of investment. Uh, I also think that perhaps means that like larger star power is on its way as well. Uh, oh, I don't know. An I interesting ca point. I can't think of any movie that has a mentor character that is less famous than the uh, the person they're mentoring. Oh, good point. Right? Like, so if yeah. no matter, even if, it, if it's Ramirez or not Ramirez, uh, whoever this mentor is needs to carry with them uh, the weight of every role they've had, right? Like, that's why we mm -hmm. like Ant Sir Anthony Hopkins in, uh, you know, The Mask of Zorro or Sir Alec Guinness. Oh, lots of sirs. Cast a sir. That's, that's mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's apparently what's on the way, it. right? That's uh, what's happening. But uh, Sir Alec Guinness in Star Wars, like, oh, let's get this, like, this guy brings a lot of gravitas to the role. Sean Connery, obviously, in Highlander. Uh, I don't know. Every, every superhero movie you've seen has a mentor character, and they're always, like, usually some storied, like, Hollywood famous person, right? Sure. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm excited to see whatever that is. Sure. Oh, uh, there's also a lot of buzz about three movies. I just dropped that in at the end there. Uh, that, ah, uh, who, of course, right? Like, uh, yeah. nothing's People been confirmed. Make now. But yeah, like, no one would ever make a movie like this without building in sequels and all that sort of stuff. And that's just not, also, like, when you cast someone like Henry Cavill, it's like he's got to sign a contract <laughs> to, like, keep him available. Uh, oh yeah, they option him for three. Right. Um, so also, that. that's that's part yeah. of I think you mentioned the level invest of investment too, Kyle, which is important. That like casting somebody like Henry Cavill and knowing what sort of franchise like, there's no way that sequels aren't 
built into the the property uh, to some degree. Uh, but like Lionsgate has to pay for that. Like if Lionsgate decides not to make this movie or not to make any sequels, they will pay Henry money. And so like, you know what I mean? Like, so th there is also that level of investment, I suppose, right? Yeah. 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 That so we'll see, those are all good sure things. Sure, Henry Let's... Cable and Chad Stileski don't, they, they, they require a big paycheck. <laughs> Fact. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Uh, I guess write us in at uh, Highlander Rewatch at gmail.com to let us know if you thought I talked too much, which I can answer right now. I did. And uh, I don't know. Uh, let us know what uh, you think of our takes. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm excited can... to see this movie. Yeah, and we'll, we'll yeah, be back with more of these as they drop more news. Uh, so, I mean, honestly, it could be three weeks before our next episode like this. It could be. Mm -hmm. Uh, four months. We'll see. Uh, but next time something happens, uh, we'll drop one of these reboot episodes. And that'll be fun. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Anything you guys want to say before we sign off? Oh, I think Kyle has a game. Oh, that's right. Kyle yeah, has a we, game. We, we talked for a long time. Do we still Oof. want to play this game? Oh, sure. Why not? Let's do it. All Let's right. Do it. Well, we are going to play a little game called Um, Actually, this is a game mm. where I am going to read some statements. There's going to be something wrong in these Ooh. statements something mm. is incorrect and you guys have to interrupt me at any time to say um actually and correct the incorrect statement Ooh. uh you can interrupt me at any time you don't need to buzz in or anything like that you must say um actually if you get mm. it wrong you can guess again but the other person has to to take a crack at it first got it all right makes sense yes all right so this is going to be Henry Cavill themed because that's what we came here to do. There's only going to be three rounds. So we'll keep it tight. We'll be a cavalcade of questions. Oh, you know it. All Cavill right. Log. Uh, Henry Cavill's debut in Superman and uh, as Superman is in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, which features some genuinely baffling moments, such as when Clark allows his birth or his uh, adoptive father to be killed by a tornado instead of effortlessly saving him, and the utter destruction of Metropolis in the final fight. That said, the movie does boast a robust supporting cast, such as Michael Shannon as Zod, Diane Keaton as Martha Kent, Amy Adams as Lois Lane, and Richard Schiff um, actually, as Dr. Emile Hamilton. Um, um, it's Diane, can I say it? Yeah. Oh, okay. The okay. Game. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is a uh, uh, former former wife of Christopher Lambert, Diane Lane, is uh, Martha Kent. That is correct. It is Ooh. wrong. Ah. Di wrong. Diane was inserted there. Oh, though I'd love to see Diane Keaton as, Mar <laughs> as Martha. Kent. <laughs> that is one point for Keith. Don't worry, Eamon. You still have the chance to tie it up and or win the whole kitten caboodle. Well, let's see. I don't know if I will. Yeah. Diane Lane. Keeping, Diane Kitten Caboodle. Nope. Yeah. Keeping this Superman train rolling. Uh, in 2016, 2016 started the inexorable march toward hashtag release the Snyder Cut, but oh. it gave us Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice, pitting Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck against each other in a brutal battle that Superman would have won if not for the fact that both of their mommies are named Martha. However, the movie did give viewers their first look at Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, setting the stage for 2017's far superior Wonder Woman. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Find the thing that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard, actually. I made these somewhat easy. Uh, so you read it again? Sure. Damn it. 2016 started the inexorable march toward hashtag release the Snyder Cut when it gave us Batman v Superman colon Dawn um, of Justice. Actually, yeah. release the Snyder Cut is for Justice League. I agree. Ah, but that good. is not the correct answer. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Keith, do you have anything to weigh in here? You keep you reading? Aim, I guess so. Oh, oh that means we may be past it. Son of a bitting. Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck against each other in a brutal battle that Superman would have won if not for the fact that both of their mommies are named Martha. However, the movie did give viewers their first look at Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, setting the I'm stage actually, for I'm actually Batman was going to win. Not that is correct. Ah. Batman was about to take out Superman when he says Batman. Martha. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Martha. Why did uh, you say that name? Yeah. Eamon, that is correct. You have tied it up. Good job. That means this last one 
is for all the marbles. Why did you say that name? It's so dumb. <laughs> also, just on the topic of dumb, I also was shocked that I had not realized that they had the same name. Like yeah, that is like pretty. just kind of weird that they have the same name and that it never occurred to me. It's kind of dumb that like the writer of that movie like came across that and based an entire movie's plot around yeah. on that fact. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's one of those things that goes like, huh? It's like interesting enough to ha- like read on the bottom of a Snapple can, but well, not interesting yeah. enough to make a movie about. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. All right. For mm-hmm. all the marbles. Why did you say that name? <laughs> yeah. More recently, Cavill has taken on the the titular role of The Witcher, Geralt of Rivia, an edgy monster hunter in an eight-episode Netflix run based on a book series by Polish author Andrzej Sapkowski that has inspired a total of three video games. This is actually the second series based on these books, as there was originally a Polish series in the early 2000s called The Hexter. Um, actually... There's no such thing as the Hexter. There is actually a early 2002 ser- uh, television series with, I believe, 13 episodes. Wow. A name that translates to The Witcher, but is more literally The Hexter. Huh. Interesting. Uh, uh, can I guess and say there are more than three video games? That is, you have identified the thing that is correct. Or you've identified, identified the thing that is wrong. Okay. Can you be more precise? That there are two video games? I don't know. Or is there more? I thought there were more. I have hey, no man. idea. Do you have a... Keith will get this point if you, unless you can come up with an answer that is more correct. Um, actually, there are five video games. No. So there is a trilogy oh. of games, which this references, Ooh. but there is also a uh, a standalone card game that has been released Ooh. inspired by it on all major platforms called Gwent, which is Gwent. okay. Hmm. Okay. So, Keith, you get that point for successfully identifying that there are more than three video games. Making you Great, let's all play this Good game. <laughs> you're, the he- you're the Hexer. The Hexter. The Hexter. Yeah. Great. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, any any other f- closing thoughts as we depart uh, Reboot Land for, for now? Who, I'm excited. Yeah, me yeah. too. Who do you think, who do you, do we have guesses on who we think the the mentor will be? Nope. I'm sure, that's fascinating. I'm trying to think of like who our current canon of like weasoned older I'm gonna make is. I'm going to make a guess. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say it's going to be Jeff Bridges. <laughs> oh, Jeff Bridges. Interesting. He'd be so friendly as Ramirez. It's yeah. like, it, I'm going to, ooh, you know who might be a good pick and it would be weird inside baseball? Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That would be good too. That would be a decent pull. It mm-hmm. needs to be someone who's like old enough to be like a, a peer as kind of a mentor character, but young mm-hmm. enough to still like tussle a bit. Sure. Yeah. Right. That's true. And Kurt so Russell, not, not Kirk Douglas. Not, not Kirk, Kirk Douglas. Douglas. Okay. Who who died at one hundred and three? <laughs> He's great in Ben and Ben Hur, right? Come on. <laughs> oh, that scene's got action movies. He can do the flashbacks. He can do it all. He can do it all. Yeah, you love to see it. Great. All right. Thanks everybody for joining us. We've been your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This is Kyle. This is Eamon. We've actually been your rebooters. Oh, today. the rebooters. But we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.